Tool number one, take steps to lay to rest the unpleasant aspects of the dysfunctional romantic relationship with a narcissist and or borderline personality. Okay, so some of us who have had relationships with the borderline and or the narcissist, we know firsthand just how volatile that relationship was in the aftermath of it. So in this first tool, I would like to challenge you all who's watching to take steps to lay to rest or to come to peace with the fact that there was a dysfunctional romantic relationship in the first place. Just accept and come to grips with it. It's very hard, but it can be done. This is one way to release that toxic energy from that particular relationship. So, you know, you might have to be patient with yourself if you are a person who was once romantically involved in a dysfunctional romantic relationship with either the borderline or the uh, narcissist. Some people have been involved with both, not at the same time, possibly, but yes, they've been involved with both types. So I just wanna challenge you to just take those steps to put this to rest so you can continue to thrive forward. Tool number two, clear the toxic energy from the dysfunctional relationship or relationships you once had with him or her or them. Okay, so again, clearing that toxic energy is a game changer. Please do your research and look up toxic energy or clearing toxic energy or how to clear toxic energy. And yes, I did do a couple of videos on this. Please do your research. This is something that is very important to do. A lot of people, they go from one romance to the other without clearing that toxic energy because the toxic energy has not been cleared or released. They haven't dealt with certain things. They haven't come to peace with certain things that may have not gone their way or, you know, that have occurred in the relationship with the narcissist or the borderline personality. Okay, so clearing the toxic energy is very important and very much the game changer. Third and final tool, continue to build and work your support base in order to exercise effective tools designed to help you invest more wisely in healthy romantic relationships. So a lot of people, they want to know how they won't end up in that mess again, right? <laughs> a lot of people, they don't want a second performance or a third performance of having a bad romance with a borderline personality or a narcissistic personality. Okay, this is something that a lot of people, once they have had a sample of that or they have had experiences of that, they usually don't want to repeat it. So continue to build and work your support base, which ought to have tools. Okay, your, your support base should have tools that are designed to help you to thrive forward and to heal and to make sure that you are investing in healthy relationships. In other words, your support base should be encouraging you to not only heal, but to thrive forward and to invest in healthy relationships. Those who have a personality disorder, such as narcissists and those with a custody personality, are less likely to choose lifelong partners who do not have a personality disorder. There are two components that narcissists and those with a borderline personality have, which attracts them to one another. There are two intimacy skills, object constancy and whole object relations. Narcissists and those who have a borderline personality have these in common, which not only attracts them to one another, but it may explain why they tend to remain in a dysfunctional relationship with one another for a long period of so time. So the borderline and the narcissist, when it comes to intimacy skills, they are level. No one is better at it than the other. This is one reason why not only are they attracted to each other, but they tend to stay in the dysfunctional romance for a long period of time. The relationship is dysfunctional. Their behavior is dysfunctional. And the narcissist and the borderline, they are each one's best supplier when it comes to source supply. So when you add all that up, there, neither person wants to really end the relationship because they're both getting supplied. Maybe for different reasons, but they're both being supplied. Object constancy is the ability to maintain positive or loving feelings for someone regardless of when he or she is disappointed, hurt, or angry with their romantic partner. 
Narcissists and those with a borderline personality show signs of instability to maintain healthy relationships due to not being able to emotionally regulate. So the narcissists, as well as those who have a borderline personality, they are very poor at emotionally regulating. The narcissists and the cluster, pardon me, the narcissists and the borderline personality. When conflicts arise, neither one of them can handle it very well. So one may be wondering again, how these two people could stay together for a long time. As I just explained in the previous slide, their level of dysfunction is equal, it's even. In general, people tend to be romantically involved with people that they are pretty much on the same level when it comes to intimacy skills. And I'll get to that in a moment. The narcissist and the borderline, they're not different in that regard from anyone else. What's that saying? Water seeks its own level. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. <clears throat> so when people go out and they look for romantic partners, this rule applies. They tend to look for somebody who has the same intimacy skills or they're on the same level when it comes to the intimacy skills. This is also how the narcissist and the borderline can stay together for a very long period of time, even though the relationship is chronically dysfunctional. The emotional connection is not in any danger of ending, but remains active when conflicts and issues occur in the relationship. A lack of object constancy is the consequence or result of not having whole object relations. Narcissists and those with a borderline personality show chronic dysfunction with interpersonal skills such as empathy and intimacy. Now I mentioned this in the previous slide. When it comes to the narcissist and the borderline personality, neither one of them know how to intimately connect with anyone else. This is one of the reasons why they are so attracted to one another. They both can ditch and dodge any responsibility in the romantic relationship. When it comes to intimacy and empathy, they are both chronically dysfunctional in that interpersonal skill or in those interpersonal skills. In a healthy relationship, the connection or the emotional connection is not in any danger of ending. But in a relationship that's dysfunctional, any little conflict, any little issue or challenge that comes up, the relationship can end. This is often why narcissists or borderline personalities who are romantically involved with people who do not have a personality disorder, such as theirs, this is why the relationship usually ends or it is very full of tension. There's hostile environments and this sort of thing. The relationship is often quite volatile. This explains why, again, narcissists and cluster personalities, as well as borderline personalities, who are romantically involved with people who do not have those types of personalities, this is why there's a lot of problems in the relationship. It is very dysfunctional. However, when it comes to narcissists and borderline personalities being romantically involved, let's not make any mistake. Their relationship is also dysfunctional, chronically so. The difference is, the narcissist and the borderline personality, they resonate with one another. When people resonate with each other, it does not necessarily mean that it's a good thing, <laughs> okay? So the narcissist and the borderline, they resonate. In other words, they understand each other to a certain degree so they can be around each other. They operate on the same vibration, yet their relationship is chronically dysfunctional whereas they actually can maintain that chronic dysfunctional relationship for years, and they often do. Their relationship sometimes is off and on. Due to having this in common with one another, the narcissists and those who have a borderline personality are familiar with this behavior pattern. Therefore, subconsciously seek these patterns in romantic partners. People in general, tend to become romantically involved with those who are on the same level of intimate skills as they are. 
whole object relation is the ability to see the good and bad in a loved one while accepting that both sides exist in one person. Narcissists and borderlines tend to see others as either all good or all bad while switching between these extremes often for the duration of the relationship. Tool number one, break the low energy cycle from the narcissist first by taking the rose colored glasses off. By telling the truth about how dysfunctional the relationship with the narcissist is, you may be able to begin to thrive forward past narcissistic abuse. Tool number two, discontinue to wish that the narcissist will change their dysfunctional behavior patterns. The narcissist has mastered toxic dysfunctional relationships. By telling yourself that you deserve the dysfunction, it will remain in your life via people, places, and things. Let go. Tool number three, give yourself permission to grieve. By choosing to give your pain a voice, you can move up and out of the sunken place, which keeps you connected in a toxic way to the narcissist's anarchist personality. Dysfunctional relationships are not natural. Therefore, by discontinuing to normalize narcissistic abuse, one can possibly begin to thrive forward.